We may struggle, we may fail, but we must try. Welcome, or welcome back, if you're returning, my name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then you should subscribe, because that's what we do here. Also, don't forget to give this video a like, because that super helps us out. Look how tiny it is. When I said I wished to speak with you after the conference, I confess I envisaged rather happier circumstances. If anything, however, this latest tragedy makes the need more pressing. There are things I must say, not to the Warrior of Light, or even my fellow Scion, but to you, Burr, my friend. Oh no, don't make me cry. But not here, no. Ah, but of course, the intercessory in Kemp Dragonhead is still open to us. Let us go there. Oh, now my heart is broken because this is where our husband used to live. <laughs> used to sit right there at that table in there. <sighs> oh. Forgive me, that took longer than expected. Is it hot chocolate? You seem puzzled. Oh, these. I thought something warming might not go amiss. It was not all that long ago that we sat here, you and I, in our very own falling snows, as Lord Horschvon called it. I still struggle to believe he is gone. And Azel, too. I had such hopes for her. Master Matoya asked me what it was all for. Why we fight, and why we die. Were I still commander of the Braves, I would doubtless have replied, for the future of Eorzea. But I'm not that man. Not anymore. I needed a new answer. One that I could live with. And when I saw Estinian at the ceremony, I knew at last what it was. I do not want to be a man who sacrifices his friends and family for a cause. I want to fight for Astinian, and I want to save him. Let's do it! When Nidhogg leads the Horde into battle, Ser Emmerich and his forces will do what they believe must be done. That is their choice to make. Yet even if Ser Emmerich is willing to forsake Astinian, I am not. We must fight for him, for he is our friend and ally. We may struggle, we may fail, but we must try. Oh, oh the memories. No, I can't. We will find a way to save him. We will. I know we will. You got this. Just cut his arms off! Thank you, Burr. It is unfair of me to unburden myself in this manner, time after time, but I am glad that you permit me nonetheless. You are my true friend and ally. Though not all of our fellow Scions will support our stance on Astidian, I have faith that we will win them over in due course. Such is the infectious power of hope. Right, that is quite enough solemn introspection for one day. I think we would both benefit from some time in the company of Tataru. She stays for us at Fort Hall Manor. Let us not keep her waiting any longer. Yet again we walk an all too familiar path. I am reminded of when we first came to this manor. Lost and uncertain, we were granted succor in our hour of need. We were saved, and now it is our turn to return the favor. Hear, hear! Let no one say that scions do not repay their debts. After all, what kind of people would we be if we forsook our friends? If we stopped looking for Ida and Papalimo, or if we gave up hope of bringing Moonphilia back? 
though she knew it would cost her dearly, when Philia reached out to us to deliver a message, she believed it was imperative that we understand the true nature of this star, of the rift between Zodiac and Hedelin, and of the Asia's inspirations. Aspirations. But for all that has been revealed, I cannot shake the suspicion that there is much we have yet to learn. In any event, I think it is time we step back from the fray and carefully consider our next course of action. It will not be easy to turn this tragedy to triumph, but we will find a way. We will. We will. You can do it! Of all the ways for it to end. Even before his transformation, I could feel the worm's hatred swirling about Estinian. Terrible, all-consuming rage. Enough to fuel a thousand-year quest for vengeance. It was all I could do not to run away screaming. But Ishgardians, nay, all Eorzeans, are made of sterner stuff. They face danger and death on a daily basis and understand what it takes to win a war. Think not too deeply on Master Matoya's words. Her intent was but to steal our resolve. That, and to remind us to look beyond these passing conflicts to trials greater still, to the truth which hides at the heart of this world. So that's your aim, is it? You disapprove? Not at all. I believe it's traditional for the student to follow in the footsteps of the master. And you are so very alike. Oh my gosh, the way the Lalafells walk though is just adorable, eh? Oh no, not this guy! Everybody just watching everybody. <laughs> They're always watching each other. Change. That great inexorable wave was upon us, and soon all of Ishgard would bend to its will. For all our sins, for all our scars, the future for which we had long yearned was at last within our grasp. But it would be bought at a heavy price. For in those twilight hours did Nidhogg cry out for vengeance, and his brethren raised their voices for the final chorus of the Dragon Song War. Oh, hey, these guys. Caution, Ida, that is all I ask. Do not be so eager to place your faith in them, not until we know more. Oh, Mistress Lynn, it is well that you are here. You are wanted within. I believe Master Alfredo wishes a word with you. You don't say. What could he possibly want now? Ah, Burr, there you are. Have you a moment? There is something I would fain discuss. I must ask you to recall the events which unfolded at the peace conference, though I dare say you would sooner forget them. 
My mind returns again and again to the moment when Nidhogg appeared before the crowd in the guise of Astidian. It was a sight to chill the soul, but one which gave me reason to hope that our friend might not be beyond salvation. When you described his fateful transformation as his law, I feared him lost forever. But the mere fact that some semblance of his former self endures must surely count for something. Alas, I have no evidence to support this impression. Thus did I turn to Estrola and Kral for a more empirical appraisal, and full glad am I that I did, for it would seem that they have some observations of their own to share. The ladies have saved us to table at the Forgotten Night. Shall we go? Sure. Excellent. Let us not keep our honored colleagues waiting. Honored. Like a hotel lobby. We have kept you waiting again. over long, I fear. Not to worry, Alphano. We had some rather fine mulled wine to keep us company. Truth be told, you could have delayed your arrival a few moments more. Gibrion got the spicing just right this time. His latest batch is not only delicious and warming, but soothing to the humors. Indeed. But it was not to soothe our humors that we gathered here. I want to soothe my humors. That sounds oh, nice. Oh no, quite right. The matter of that poor dragoon. You have discovered something. A means to save him? Let us not jump to conclusions, shall we? Assess the facts presented, then make an educated analysis, as you were taught. Pray, cast your mind back to the moment of Astinian's transformation. Do you recall how you described it to us? You spoke of the sudden pangs which racked his body when he took up both of Nidhogg's eyes, and of how his form was twisted thereafter into a shadowy semblance of the Great Worm. When he appeared at Falcon's Nest, the worm's eyes were fused to his mail. Would that only his armor had been corrupted. Snaking forth from the eyes, I described dark tendrils which entangled his very being. His ether has been all but smothered. Then he is lost to us forever? What did I just say about jumping to conclusions? Ishtola clearly stated all but smothered. Such a teacher. As I later discovered, her impression matched my own. Though Nidhogg's presence filled my mind's eye, beneath his seething aura, I sensed the merest hint of something else. And after listening to Ishtola's observations, I became more certain of my suspicion that the something else I had sensed was, in fact, the trace of a different will, submerged in the sea of Nidhogg's rage. You mean? Yes, tis like that Estinian spirit yet lingers. Can we not wrest him from Nidhogg's grasp then? Tear the eyes from the armor? We know not if that would serve to separate Worm's soul from man's. None have ever attempted such a feat. Should it offer even the faintest hope of success, then by the gods, I shall be the first to try. Alphino. By all means, hold fast to your hope, but be mindful of the dangers. Even should you succeed in excising the eyes from the dragoon's mail, we have no way of knowing if your friend's soul would survive so violent a separation. And that is to say nothing of the possibility that his would-be saviour might become Nidhogg's next host. But what other choice remains to us? Should the opportunity present itself, I will tear those foul orbs from Astinian's armour and trust in the resilience of his soul, even at the risk of mine own. Ah, I found you at last! A messenger of the Temple Knights came to the manor some few hours past. The Lord Commander humbly requests the company of the Warrior of Light and Master Alphano. Sir Emmerich would speak with us. Very well, thank you, Anawa. To 
would seem duty calls. Pray see to yours, and we shall return to ours. Thank you, Yishtola, Kryl. Your words have given me hope where there was none. Come then, Sir Emmerich awaits. Alphano is allowing his feelings for this dragoon to cloud his thoughts. I worry he may do something rash. Keep an eye on him, would you? They think more of their friends to deliverance than their foes defeat. But will history commend their fealty, or condemn their folly? The conference held at Falcon's Nest was to be a celebration of the reconciliation twixt man and dragon. But the lingering shade of Nidhogg clad in the flesh of the Azure Dragoon, did mark the occasion by spilling the blood of his own kind. A timely atrocity to remind the children of Ishgard that the Dragonsong War was far from over. And when fear gave way to fury, the call to arms rang out anew. Death to Nidhogg. Death to Nidhogg. Oh, that's right. Firm Albert. Firm Albert. Firm Albert. <laughs> what news has Sir Emmerich to share with us, I wonder? Whom? Might Sir Emmerich perchance have received word of a Dravidian advance? Or oh, mayhap they have located a sti- That is to say, mayhap Nidhogg has been found. Come. I would hear what the Lord Commander has to say. My friends, I thank you for coming. You're welcome. You have had news of Nidhogg? Alas, not. Our scouts range far and wide, but they have as yet found no trace of the Great Worm. We dispatched an elite unit of dragoons to reconnoiter the churning mists. But even they returned empty-handed. A pity. Fear not, Alphano. We shall see the worm again soon enough. His words at Falcon's Nest attest to that. Indeed, he is like to come sooner than we would wish. I assume Ishgard's defenses are being bolstered as we speak? With all haste. I mean to call upon every able-bodied warrior at our disposal, from the Knights of the Four Houses to the men and women of the Watch. But I did not summon you to discuss strategy. What then would you have of us, my lord? I will speak plain. Now that Nidhogg is possessed of both of his eyes, no mortal force we can muster will repel him. That being the case, we must needs recruit an ally of equal strength. You speak of grace, Felga. I do. To whom else could we turn? Dragons versus dragons. <laughs> that he is Nidhogg's equal, I do not deny. Nor can I name another. But convincing the reclusive creature to do battle with his own brood brother will be... How shall I put this? It will be no small undertaking, yes. Estinian's report was most particular about Hres Velga's unwillingness to involve himself in the affairs of men. But much has changed since your visit to Somal, and if there is even a chance that the dragon may be swayed, I must plead our case. Whatever price the dragon asks of me, I shall pay it. Such was my oath, to defend the people of Ishgard. Come what may, my friends, the battle with Nidhogg will mark the end of my tenure as the acting head of church and state. Will you help me discharge this final duty?
We will, my lord. Lord. Though I fear our involvement offers no guarantee of success. Come then. We will depart at your leisure. Thank you. Both of you. The city is yours, First Commander. My lord, we shall pray for your swift return. Huge man. <laughs> so tall. Just ginormous. It grieves me to impose upon you in this matter, but you of all people understand the threat we now face. It is no imposition, Sir Emmerich. To Burr and I, Ishgard is as a second home. After the many battles we have fought and the bonds we have forged, the plight of your nation has become our own. If there is aught that we can do to aid in its salvation, then pray impose all you must. You are true friends. Shall we be about our task then? We have no way of knowing when Nidhogg's shade will strike, but we must assume that time is not our ally. Indeed. With that in mind, I have taken the liberty of dispatching a messenger to inform Mr. Tataru that you will be escorting me to Sam Al. I confess I did not provide the exact details of our destination, as they are yet unknown to me. I have no idea what's going on. We will summon Race Felger at Zenith in the Churning Mists. Ere we begin our ascent, however, I think it best that we pay a visit to Enix Trine. You seek an advantage in the coming neg negotiations? I do. I would consult with Vidofner. I propose this in part out of concern for her condition. Were she su to succumb to her wounds, it could have grave consequences for our alliance. That apart, she may be able to provide insight into her sire's current state of mind. Well reasoned. To the Dravenian forelands, then. There she is. Our friend. At least she has her head up. Ah, tis the warrior of warriors and her companions. What bringeth you to mine abode? Pray forgive us for disturbing your recuperation, Vidofner. I hope your wound does not pain you over much. Didst thou imagine me close to death? The thrust was deep, but not mortal. I will heal in time. Full glad am I to hear it. You were the guest of honor at our conference, and we failed in our duty of protection. On behalf of Ishgard, I apologize unreservedly. I am a dragon full grown, and thou art thought to protect me, mortal. I was tempered by the fires of battle ere thy great-grandsire learned to crawl. Oh gosh. <laughs> thy words do remind me of a knight whom I called a friend some thousand years past. He swore to defend me from harm and hardship. Would that we could return to that era of peace when man and dragon knew such comradeship. Would that our every effort to do so were not undone by ancient rancor. For a truth, there can be no peace while Nidhogg's shade yet lingereth. That much is plain, yet we lack the strength to banish him. Thus do we make for some all to beseech the aid of your sire once more. Folly, thou knowest as well as I how he will answer. Hrace Vilger's heart remains unchanged then, a pity. But if it is folly to hope, I am content to die a fool. <laughs> as hath ever been the way with thy kind. Go then, but be warned. The Shade's presence hath driven its minions to frenzy. Thank you, Finofna. We shall disturb your rest no longer. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you guys are dumb. Though I expected no better answer from Finofna, I take little pleasure from having been proven right. It would seem that our presence at Zenith will be every bit as unwelcome as I had anticipated. But what is the ire of one great worm to a trio of self-confessed fools such as ourselves? Let us begin our ascent. 
After you, Master Alphino. Scout ahead if you wish, Burr. We shall join you outside Mongholm. What do you think of the Moogles, Emmerich? <laughs> this place is so cool looking. I had heard tales of the world above the clouds, but never did I dream. One's mind paints a pale picture of its majesty. Few live to see such wonders. I am reminded of my first visit to this peak, when Astidian and Azel yet walked at our side. <laughs> and she loved the boobles. She thought they were so cute. <gasps> Koopala, is that you, Burr? Ah, if it isn't Mog. Mog, ah. Uh... Don't tell you me you've forgotten my name, Kubo. After all we've been through together. But at least you remember me. You, you do remember me, don't you, Burr? Ah, uh, how can I forget you, Moglin? Of course I do, Moghan. Apologies, friend, but all Moogles look the same to me. We're gonna go with the middle one. Of course I do, Moghan. I got the name right? Phew, you seemed a bit hesitant for a moment there, but I'm sure you were just fondly recalling the time we camped near Zenith, right, Koopo? But putting our shared history to one side, what brings you and your friends to Mog home, Koopo? Ah, another audience with old Horace Vulgar. Well, I hope you brought the horn, Koopo. With the winds as gentle as they are, a good loud toot should reach the great worm's ears easily enough. That is good to hear, Moghead. Thank you. We are best press on to Zenith while the winds are in our favor. <laughs> now that was unexpected, Koopa. Chieftain Moghead will want to hear about this. You dare so maybe again, mortals. Great race, Velga. Tis not likely that we beg this audience. Pray hearken to our words, for they concern the future of man and dragon both. Greetings, Resvelga. I am Emmerick de Burel, acting ruler of the nation of Ishgard. That's his last name? I did not know that. <laughs> I am come before you to parley on behalf of my people. Thinkest thou thy purpose unclear to me? Thou art come to beg mine aid in the battle against the shade of my brood brother. You foresaw mine intent. I but read that which is writ plain in thine eyes. Would that thou had wit enough to scry the answer in mine. Alain in esk dish wink, e en udran fakin an shin. 
My beloved Shiva did once build a bridge twixt man and dragon, a bridge which thy treacherous forefathers saw fit to tear down, as thou well knowest. Lis ek nit ek kasmun ikili, lis nuan jas an es in salen mon an es undai in. Thinkest thou Nidhag was alone and despairing at the murder of our brood sister? Thinkest thou mine own soul did not cry out for vengeance? Know then that upon that accursed day my heart did wither in my breast, and thy kind become unto me the harbingers of despair. Harbingers. Tis only Shiva's gentle dream that preventeth me from flying at Nidhogg's shoulder. Be grateful that I swore to abjure aggression ere I consumed her. <laughs> I forget. He ate her. Set Osk, com e niteg kin an. Nosk de gan em. I permit my children to offer or deny the aid as they see, as they say see fit. To warn thy people of my brood brother's coming, that thou wouldst dare ask more of me, but affirmeth thine incurable arrogance. We understand that in your despair at man's betrayal, you seek only the refuge of solitude. But despite your protestations of spent faith, do you not still nurture the smallest flame of hope? Perceivest thou such light in the dusk of my existence? I do. If you claim I see falsely, then tell me. Why did you consent to bear Rizel upon your back? Is no Kaisia in Holes Eskdia Valsu Nesk An in Eskba? Isael, piteous, deluded Isael, the child did lament her past sins and sought to balance the scales with her remaining days. Twas her unquenchable passion, so alike to that of my beloved, which did spur me into fight. And for mine own part, I would countenance no longer the hands of evil men to use my brood brother's eye for ill. So you do distinguish between those who acknowledge and repent their sins and those who perpetuate them. Interesting. It seems to me that you have not, in fact, lost faith in mankind as a whole. Rather, you weigh our respective merits by how we allow the past to influence our future. Spare me thine idle sophistry. Even were there a motive truth in thy reasoning, what of it? Wouldst thou have me slay mine own sibling to save a city of mortals? It's a lot to ask. Should we suffer ties of blood to bind our hands, then? Nay, if the crime is one of unconscionable evil, we must needs condemn it, even should the transgressor be our closest kin. When my father corrupted himself and his followers with the power of a primal, I beseeched the warrior of light to slay him, an act alike to patricide. 
That he did not die by my hand matters little. If anything, it heaps greater disgrace upon my name. But had my father not fallen, he would have drawn countless thousands into a holy war of hellish proportions, which I hold the greater crime. Thus did I order his execution, sparing the lives of my people and yours. Alas, your brother Worm now prepares to murder those whom I sought to spare. What is more, he has taken my comrade's body for his own. But if I must slay my dearest friend to defeat my direst foe, I will not flinch from my duty. Un infim, ses antis ekmon, kin al ud. Thou wouldst strike down thy friend, and by example of thy righteousness, persuade me to break mine oath and kill my kindred. Oh, here come daddy. <laughs> Sloskna, dear kin ilves, kohesna inish. Uh -oh. in. Heed me, my child. The servants of Heidelin envision a different outcome. They intend salvation not only for Ishgard, but for the doomed Dragon Slayer as well. <gasps> Emric is like, say what? Big Star Trek fans. Star Trek and Star Wars. <laughs> Believest thou this shade to be Nidhogg returned? It is not merely a manifestation of his vengeance. The shadow cast by thy brood brother's rage. I would not command thee, but ponder well thy course, lest it lead thee unto greater remorse. What will you say? While this shade of vengeance remains, the future will never will ever be uncertain. Help us save our companion. Dot dot dot. Uh we're just gonna go with the top one. That sounds like the best answer. El in an has nesh Dinog's transformation into rage incarnate is, in part, of mine own doing. I rendered unto him mine eye, and empowered his revenge thereby. But tis the purity of my blood brother's wrath that lendeth him his all-surpassing might. As to thou the strength of will to stand against so terrible a shadow, I wonder, twould seem I must put thee and thy companions to the proof. Sway in Ratatoska this thy arm. Slosky. Skor ich less evil. I shall await thee in the ruins where Ratatoska once dwelled. Heed well the words of my children and hasten thee to the place of thy trial. Well, of course, it can't be easy. What's that Moogle doing there? I believe I spied a wyvern landing just outside the palace. It is doubtless one of the children of whom Horace Valgar spoke. Come, my friends, let us not keep our escort waiting. He's like so scrawny. 
My brood of and I will bear you to the place of your trial. Make your preparations. Hey all, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video of the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right from uh, all of us to all of you. <laughs> Bye.